Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Nightly Video for the 5th of May, 2020. And we're talking the market back at this midpoint, 2900 and 2800. We'll see this on the daily chart, and we'll pull it actually back to a larger perspective, which is our weekly chart. And we'll maximize the screen. This is, again, the S&P 500. And looking at how this key level has been resistance, really back in 2018, a couple times, a few times in 2019, but also support. So it is what is known as a polarity point, meaning it's a spot the market has gravitated toward, then moved away from, toward, then moved away from, toward, then moved away from, but then at the same time became support. So it just continues to be a critical reference point. At the moment, it's serving as resistance, but we'll be watching this in the week ahead. Namely, we had the Fed last week. They didn't do much to the Fed funds rate, or not much to speak of, at least in the Fed uh, decision. We now have the unemployment report and the monthly jobs report. The non-farm payrolls comes out this Friday. So we will be watching the markets very closely and monitoring open positions with respect to what the unemployment rate will be. And we'll talk about that closer as it gets to us. But just for a quick reference, how to look that up. If you're ever curious about any type of earnings, you can see lots of them here or economic reports. You would go to your market watch tab. You can divide it up how you want to do it. We'll actually take off earnings for the moment, take off the conference calls, and take off futures liquidations. Now that way we just have econo day events. Now where the picture becomes a little clearer, retail sales on Tuesday. You can always go inside and see exactly what the projection will be. PMI composite, the initial unemployment jobs, and that's on Thursday, but we have the unemployment situation. Double clicking this just for quick reference as we plan into this week. Talks about the previous last month's jobs report was down 700,000 workers. The expected or the projected for the this one is going to be about 21 million to 50. So 21 million Americans filing for unemployment or the uh, unemployment rate there this right here goes from 4.4 percent which is great for a rising economy all the way to 16.3 not the focus of tonight's video but just keeping this in mind is something that could be a big whammy for the market of course if we slide in under and say oh 20 million as opposed to 21 million as perverse as that may seem that may be a catalyst for a bull type of event because it wasn't as bad as expected that's Sometimes how markets work. So just keep that in the back of your mind as we go into these next few sessions. This remains a ceiling for the market until it breaks above. So we're going to expect it to hold. Keep in mind, in the past, this has been resistance, but it may have sliced a little bit beyond it. And that's just shy of the 3,000 print before turning back and going the other way. So this will be our focal point, whether you are a swing or intraday trader, or maybe even a position trader with some in-out spreads, or maybe some vertical spreads, or any other type of option position, three, six months in the future. That's a level to watch for the S&P 500. In the NASDAQ, we see a strong rising trend, and we are a little stronger than the halfway point. Its reference point, similarly, was about 8,000 for the futures. The Dow is a little weaker because it's not quite at the midpoint, but we'll be focusing on 24,000 for the Dow futures. And the Russell is the weakest and remains the weakest. So that's your key updates for those markets. On a quick note, just for a mid Tuesday update here, we'll take a look at our fangs, which is our Facebook, Amazon could be Apple too, Netflix and the Goog. And just to compare how they have performed. So Amazon very well made new highs, but then came down from 2,400. Facebook, uh, despite how bearish traders might be on Facebook, it's creeping up above the 200 per share print. That is a key level to focus on. Netflix just made new highs, but pulled off. So it's retracing back to that 400, maybe 440. And the key pivot for Netflix is about the 400 per share. And then Google remains, again, strong. 1,400 is key for it. Just quick overviews. And just a comparison, this is why tech is a little stronger, because the technology names, the fangs, the monsters attack, the titans attack, continue to make 
uh, either higher highs in some examples or just shy of those highs. So that's a little broader perspective for the monsters of tech. And we can also throw Microsoft in there as well and see that it is just shy of its 190 per share high. So key focal points are in play for all these indices, all of these names. I want to show you a quick little reference here to the stocks making new highs. We'll kind of look at this. This should be a public scan. If not, look at the Theotrade shared studies page or or send us an email as well for new highs. There's many ways to look at this and scan for this, but what I'm doing is showing you new yearly highs. We'll trade this to be the S&P 500, and then we'll just, and these don't matter too much. We'll get those off of there. You can do lots of things, stock scans, and I'm gonna keep it simple. And by the way, there are two stocks making new 52-week lows. They're Love, which is Southwest Airlines. It's an airline stock. Those are generally have been beaten down and have not recovered. LUV is making new lows. And then Cincinnati Financial. Now let's go ahead and scan for those names that are making new 52-week highs, and in some case, new all-time highs. If you are bearish or have bear positions on, or your portfolio is weighted heavily delta neutral, and you might want to put one or two bull trades on just in case the market breaks above, clears through that 2,900, clears through 3,000, and then resumes its journey up to the highs. You want to at least balance out or hedge your portfolio or your account with a few type of long spreads, calls, or different uh, hedges like that. I like to look at relative strength names. And we show these on a relatively frequent basis, or I do, in terms of strong stocks getting stronger. And the easiest way to find those are new stocks making new highs, or stocks making new 52-week highs or new all-time highs. And we'll pull these over into a candidate list right here. It's just a watch list, new yearly highs, new yearly lows. We'll just change that over. And I just have scanned from this one, new yearly highs. And that gives me the names in here. So it's the same type of list. Now, if we look at that on a scan, and the reason I do that, by the way, is so that I can do the charts a little bit quicker. We'll go back to our daily chart and we'll see how these play out. So Regeneron, and I'm sorting them by percent change on today's session. So maybe we'll look at the weekly chart. Uh, and we'll make that a full screen view. What's the play? What's the plan? Why are we looking at these? That which is strong do tend to get stronger. Stocks that are uptrending or general, and that's also a healthcare or pharmaceutical, and that's getting up to the 600 per share level. As a trader, we want to buy pullbacks or what I call trade retracements or trade flags, bull flags particularly. So you see strong volume, strong momentum. You see a price making higher highs, higher lows and rising moving averages, we expect these prices to go higher and we buy them and manage risk, put on position spreads and calls and verticals, etc., into pullbacks, flags, or retracements to either rising trend lines or rising moving averages. One of them just completed in Regeneron. Remember, it's been one of our top lists for a couple of weeks now, really a few weeks, because it continued to make higher highs in here. So that relative strength or leadership continued so Regeneron is a really a, a rare, somewhat rare, bull candidate making higher highs persistently in this recovery phase. So it continues to be a strong candidate. We don't buy it now, we buy it on pullbacks. Now, back to the daily chart. And there's a daily chart. I Just for this conversation, we'll just look at the weekly charts of these stocks. So <clears throat> you might not know what these stocks do. That's okay. You don't have to put them in your portfolio, but just thinking out loud with these names. Service now is again strong stock getting stronger. That's a big rally. Compare these names as you scan your own candidates from the daily chart and the weekly chart, right? What happened in the bigger picture and where my I position? Not a lot to position when the stock's at all time highs. These are not necessarily trade right now candidates, but do so on pullbacks or retracements. This would be Old Dominion, Freightline, right? freight companies new high and just we might not look at all of them but just take a look at how they play how they performed and that's a new all-time high remember the thesis is that which is strong tends to get stronger if you're looking for a directional bend things that are uptrending tend to keep uptrending newmont mining we've discussed quite a bit and that is a strong stock that continues to get stronger continues to show up on our scans and we want to buy those pullbacks little retracement trades are just getting risk 
into your position. We, we won't scan all of them, but Activision, Electronic Arts, and we'll just look at PayPal. It's more, it's an easy one to understand. And that's also made a new, a new all-time high, new all-time high. And uh, PayPal there. So just keep watching names, keep watching stocks. I understand the positions are more bearish or defensive than not. That is understandable. That is completely acceptable. That is our prerogative. That's what we're thinking. Markets into resistance. All the headlines are negative. We are in recession. Everything else under the sun. But the market could break up, could break higher. And that's Fed field stimulus, governmental policy, or just anything else that is a bailout or things that might not make sense from a rational standpoint. And yet the market trades higher. So that's just reality of price. That's why we hedge. That's why we do not predict the future. That's why we put positions on and manage our delta and manage our portfolios as opposed to throwing our entire account long or our entire account short. Just a caution sign as we're into this critical pivot as we go this week and beyond. As always, be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with your Theo Nightly video for May 5th, 2020.